Coming up on this week's Titans All Access, I've got two words for you. Big <laughs> Jeff. I'm him. Jeffrey Simmons had a lot to say against the Bengals. Will that carry into this weekend's divisional showdown with the Colts? Tannehill firing downfield. It's caught by a cockroach. And he's tackled at the 49-yard line of Cincinnati by Taylor Britt. And Titans tight end Chig Conquo. It's talking about what brings out the best in him. That and plenty more as an all-new Titans All Access starts now. But there he is, the Yuli Bulldozer, Derrick Henry. Got Chris Moore. Can he catch it? What a catch! Ryan Tannehill! Yeah, fires up the other side. A body hooker. There's Hopkins making the catch. It's October. The weather has turned cool. We've pulled out the sweaters and we're getting ready to go to Indianapolis. Welcome to the Bed MGM Studio and Titans All Access. I'm Mike Keith. We start off with something really special on this program. A couple weeks ago, our Nissan Insider was Jeffrey Simmons and He discussed how he loves to talk. So we thought, hmm, why don't we put a microphone on him for the game against the Cincinnati Bengals and see exactly what that would be like. As usual, Big Jeff did not disappoint. So Titans All Access fans, listen up. Presented by Duncan with Jeffrey Simmons. It's about us, man. It's about us. Play your game, play your game, play your game. Amen, amen. This is going to be a That's big game for It you. is. Let's get a win. Start up front. Hey, King, have a day. Have a day. Bright, bright sunshine over Nissan Stadium. We will go near 90 before this game is over. Let's see if the heat can spark the Titans today. <laughs> Come on! One play at a time. Stay with me. One play at a time. Come on, man! You too light! You too light! Burrow in the shotgun. Drops. Pocket collapses. Come on! on. Outstanding on business! I'm him! Jeffrey Simmons, Danica Autry! Take Joe Burrow to the mat! Yes! Didn't even know it was a sack. There we go, O! Play fake, he rolls to his right, he throws to the flat. It's caught. Westbrook Akine 10, Westbrook Akine 5, Westbrook Akine end zone. Touchdown! Tight! Yeah! Good drive, Tanner. Gonna give Henry a chance on the left side. Here he goes, the big man. To the 25, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, to the end zone. Ladies and gentlemen, the King! Touchdown, Titans! You him! You him! I see you out there blocking. Party in the backfield. This is my jungle. I'm the damn king of the jungle. Hey! Don't forget my play. Woo! Tannehill under center. The fullback is Simmons. Now Tannehill goes in motion to the right. Simmons is offset. Touchdown! Woo! As Wiley catches the touchdown pass. His first career touchdown. And the Titans go king cat. Derrick Henry. It's too late. I was gonna pick that, take it to the crib. KB came and fell on that. Snoop Dogg a dog. Ah! Oh no. 
girl beat, it's your boy Big Jump. Coming through the door, oh, I ain't gonna do it. Come on! Team win, team win. Hell of a team defense, man. Hell of a win. Hell of a player, dog. What you think to you? The Tennessee Titans are two and two. Final score, Tennessee 27, Cincinnati 3. Hey, hey. Big Jeff and the Titans defense playing outstanding run defense to this point in the year. As a matter of fact, dating back to last year, 10 straight games without allowing a 100-yard rusher. A bigger challenge this weekend in Indianapolis against rookie quarterback Anthony Richardson. We'll break down the former Florida Gators play coming up as we go beneath the surface with Dave McGinnis. But up next, Nissan Insider, Chigakakwa, trying to get better in year two and starting to get hot. That's next on Titans All Access. This is Stadium in 60. Quick update on the Titans' new stadium. Let's talk about the terraces at the new Titans Stadium. The terraces promise to add a uniqueness that Titans fans will love. Adam Noose is a Titans Senior Vice President and Chief Revenue Officer. You know, I think as we think about the next generation, I think there's going to be a lot of fans that uh, want to say that they were at the game and they want to come and uh, experience the game, but also experience uh, what is Nashville. And I think the terraces really represent that rooftop bar feeling. Um, it's going to be something that, uh, as we're really aiming to, to be in something that's sustainable long term, I think that's where fans are going to want to come and it's going to give us an opportunity to use our stadium all year round and, uh, and give some of the best looks of what makes Nashville great, our downtown. For the latest news, visit TitansNewStadium.com. Welcome back inside the Bet MGM studio. Titans All Access continues with the Nissan Insider. And this week we focus upon tight end Chigakakwo, second year man out of Maryland, 10 catches, 71 yards. Feels like he's about to get hot. And that's because of the hard work he's putting in. He sits down with our Amy Wells to talk about his efforts. Chigakakwo, there may not be a more talked about position than the Tennessee Titans tight ends. It seems like that has been all the buzz. What are you liking out of the group of guys in the tight end room? Everybody just shows up every single day and just does what they're supposed to do. I feel like that's, that's uh, just the essence of a tight end, really. I feel like a tight end is very like selfless position on a team, and that's kind of like just the spirit that every guy kind of embodies, really. Just do what we need to do, get done for the team. We talk about expectations when it comes to the tight ends room. It also seems like there's a lot of expectations on you personally within the tight ends room. Have you felt that kind of the weight of additional expectations going into just year two? Uh, no, I don't really feel expectations from like anybody else. I don't really like their expectations don't really mean anything to me because I, I, for me, I feel like my expectations for myself are always going to be higher than what anybody else has expectations for me. So for me, it's always like me, 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 my expectations. It's like whatever anybody says, I'm expecting this out of you this year, it's like that's irrelevant because I know that I want more for myself than what they want, they might see out of me. I know that I keep saying over and over again that you're just in your second year because when you talk, you sound like a vet who has been in the league for eight years. Yeah. You seem <laughs> very confident and established and like you know what's going on and was your rookie year hard for you even? The beginning of rookie year was hard just trying to because uh, at first it was really just like you're swimming in information really it's like you're not really playing the game of football you're just out there think 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 i remember that i, I was like don't mess up don't mess up don't mess up and i was just kind of thinking but then like once you start getting more comfortable and you can just go out there and play and just stop like you know just playing so tight and just be lo more loose out there i feel like that's when i um, really started to get better tony deuce is a new face in mm -hmm the tight ends room, but he's not a new face to the Titans offense. How has he impacted the tight ends room? How has his perspective kind of changed or impacted what you guys are doing? Tony's a, uh, he's a coach that likes to, you know, he really likes to hammer the details. You know, he's going to get on you. He's going to get on you a lot, like messing up, like you don't hear him. <laughs> so here we go. Say, hit. No, 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 stop trying to hold it with two hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say, hit, fall back, fall back, fall back. Oh my, let's go. Yeah, yeah, leave. But you know, those are the things that like kind of makes 
those are little things that people don't see that you know attribute to greatness like if you can't you know run back to the huddle maybe you won't run to finish a block that could be a touchdown and you know finish a game and then now you miss that you know just those little things everything everything matters i feel like for me what expectations have you put on yourself for this season this year just go out there and and, and ball out play like how i know that i can play and i don't want to you know give exact you know specifics but you know i feel like i could be one of the top guys in this game so for me, it's just going out there and just doing everything that I know that I can do. 2023 marks the 25th season of Tennessee Titans football. And as we continue with our Titans at 25 series presented by Bud Light, coming up next, one of the greatest defensive performances in franchise history. We call this piece Blaine's Game. And it's next on Titans All Access. Tannehill under center, toss sweep, Spears juggling it, picks it up, comes back to the other side, finds Ruth, 30, Tannehill blocking, 35, 40, 45, and he's taken down at midfield. Oh, it's like a carnival act. He was the juggler in the backfield. The 1999 playoff win over Buffalo was the Music City Miracle Game. The 99 AFC Championship win was about beating Jacksonville for a third time. The win in between those two at Indianapolis, that was Blaine Bishop's game. Blaine Bishop had already made three Pro Bowls when the 1999 playoffs arrived. He was established, he was respected. But when January 16th, 2000 arrived, all he could feel was the need to prove himself one more time. As Blaine went home to Indianapolis, he was filled with memories from his Cathedral High School days, winning a state championship, seeing family and friends who knew him by his nickname, Woody, seeing Father Patrick Kelly. It brought a lot of excitement and it brought a lot of memories. So I got to the stadium and I walked around it, you know, nobody was hardly on the field, and I see uh, Father Kelly, who was our principal at my high school. You know, we were just going back and forth, and he said, man, uh, who would have thought that the guy we called Woody uh, in high school uh, would be in the National Football League? And I said, well, I've been on this field a lot. He said, yeah, we, we probably should have won twice, right? He said, I said, yeah. And I said, this feels like home. I'm pretty comfortable. It's gonna be a great day. It was beyond a great day. It was a dominant day. He was in the zone. And when the guy's in the zone, you just watch and marvel at what he's able to accomplish. Blaine blew up plays in the backfield, and he made sure that Indy's receivers heard footsteps down the field. As the game went on, it became obvious Blaine Bishop was on a mission. He was taking over this game from safety spot. Wow. There's a side in this game that I've never done ever in a game, and that was when my chin strap got knocked off. I made a, I think he was throwing to the tight end, and I, I made a PBU. I should have picked it, but I ran so fast, and I didn't know I was going to get there that quick, and then I undercut the tight end on a play, and then my helmet kind of got knocked up. So I took it off, and I said, I am the best. I had never done that in a game. I don't even know why, but reason why I did that, only reason why I did that is because for whatever reason, I knew Father Kelly was standing right there where I was. And I turned around and said to him, I am the best. Wait, but it's a long, long time. Maybe everybody who's been playing here, but first is Little League, you want to be right here. This is where you want to be, this is the ultimate, baby. 11 tackles and two passes defensed. The stats didn't tell the story. One of the NFL's most dominant offenses was stymied by the presence of number 23. You know, we see the, the offense sees him out there playing his behind off against a trio that was pretty nasty. Like Marvin Harrison, Edwin James, Peyton Matt, and they had the bye week. They had a great year. So, you know, uh, we were supposed to, I guess, lose that game by, what, 10 points or, or more? Um, but there, he was a fighter. We felt every, we felt every play that he made, and we responded to that. So. Um, when Blaine had the game that he had, man, we, we just rode his coattail, his energy, his spunk, and, um, and found a way to win that ball game. Blaine Bishop has had a lot of great days for this franchise, but this was the best. It was one of the best defensive performances in Titans history. It 
was Blaine's game. It's time for the decision of the week presented by Hughes and Coleman. When Jeffrey Simmons jogged out to play fullback on the goal line and with Derrick Henry in the shotgun, the Bengals were confused and called a timeout. Instead of changing the play, the Titans decided to run with the king cat. Ryan Tannehill split out wide and Aaron Brewer snapped it directly to Henry who then found rookie tight end Josh Wiley in the end zone for six. It marked the fourth passing touchdown in Henry's career and made for a great decision as the Titans extended their lead 17-3. to Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio as Titans All Access continues. This is Titans Radio's Dave McGinnis here to talk about the next Titans opponent, the Indianapolis Colts. They will see another quarterback, and it is rookie Anthony Richardson out of the University of Florida, all 6'4", 244 pounds of him. Dave McGinnis, as you wrote him up prior to the draft, how did you see him as a prospect? The generational athlete. If he's going to be a high draft pick, He's probably going to go to a place where they're going to play him immediately. And so the way that he has been handled, I think, has been very, very good there at Indy. They are giving him things that he can do that he's comfortable with. But his athletic ability is off the charts. It is off the charts. Uh, Every now and then, you and I go to all that. We've been to the Combine for years and years and years. And every now and then, there's a dude that comes through there that when he goes through all the testing, everybody just goes, whoa. Whoa. This is a whoa guy. This is a whoa guy. Let's go beneath the surface right now, powered by Microsoft, and take a look at some of these plays from Anthony Richardson so far this season. Coach, show us number five. This is 11 personnel, but they like to do this a lot. You you see these guys up here? They are going to stack these guys up here. These two guys are stacked. They've got a lot of scheduled and unscheduled runs for this quarterback. Both of them draw different problems for your defense. With a scheduled run, you're going to have to play a plus one, Mike. And when I say a plus one, somebody from this area right here, either this guy or this guy, has got to get involved in the run game. Here is the quarterback. Now, the circle's not big enough to circle him because he's a huge dude, okay? (laughs) They're going to bring this guy across here to block the edge in what we call a crunch look, a crunch block. Bring a tight end across behind the line of scrimmage to be an extra blocker on this side. Let's take a look at it. Motion, here's the crunch look. They they do not have the plus one. The plus one clearly was too deep, right? Let's just see, see the setup here. This is a nine technique. This is a three technique. Right here, that's Aaron Donald. So let's take a look at it. And again, they get motion to draw the eyes this way. And then they're going to bring the crunch block. This is the crunch blocker. He's going to come across over here and be the lead blocker as they start to move outside. Let's take a look at it now, understanding what goes on. He was never really going to give Moss the ball, was he? No. This was his run all the way. This is a designed run, and this is how they're using him, Mike. This is a scheduled run all the way. Averaging six yards a carry so far, four touchdown runs. Let's take a look at another Richardson play, if you don't mind, Coach. I'd like for people to get a sense of the different things that he is able to do. They've got four up front. They're going to bring an extra adder. Let's just take it right here to the launch point. I would think this cylinder is collapsed, wouldn't you? I would say that's collapsed. Okay, now, this is not the proper footwork right here. Look where his feet are. Look at his look at his feet right here. His feet are parallel. You wouldn't think there's any way, especially with these people collapsing. This right here is a mass of humanity. They're on top of it. He's 6'4 plus. He's standing back there. Look at where his arm is. Now, let's watch the throw. Watch the throw. Unbelievable. There's the catch. And how long is that throw down field, Mike? 40 yards. Thank you very much. You can count. I can't. Okay, but this is the problem. This is the problem this guy presents. Not only in the scheduled run, off scheduled run, you're going to have to plaster coverage, which means zone has to turn into man in the back end. And then this right here, he's never out of it. He never got his arm quarter of the way through. That's the problem this quarterback presents. He's a playmaker more than a quarterback at this point in time. He's an athlete that's a playmaker more than a quarterback at this time. (laughs) Coach Dave McGinnis with us will be with Titans Radio this weekend calling the game at Indianapolis. When we come back, I've got my seat geek keys to victory. Stay with us for more Titans All Access. Titans play at Indianapolis this Sunday. Time for the seat geek keys to the game. Number one, probably not surprising after what you saw from Coach Mack earlier in the program, you've got to contain Anthony Richardson. 
He's big, he's fast, and he's young. He probably can't run their entire offense right now, but he sure can run the football and make things happen. The Titans have to get him on the ground and keep him from making big plays. Containing Richardson is key number one. Number two, about the Titans' offense. Get everyone involved or keep everyone involved. Last week, both running backs were involved, tight ends made plays, several wide receivers made things happen. When Ryan Tannehill is playing point guard, when he's making sure the ball gets to a lot of different people, this offense really percolates. That's why it's a big key to keep everyone involved this weekend in Indianapolis. And finally, relax and just play. Relax and enjoy. The Titans coming off a win. They know what they're all about. They're going into a hostile environment, but it's a place that they've won four straight years. Go do your thing. Indianapolis has a fine team, but if the Titans do what they did last week, they'll give themselves an outstanding chance to win this AFC South battle. Bottom line, relax and enjoy. Play your game. Don't get uptight and don't make mistakes because you're tense. And those are your Seat Geek keys to the game this weekend at Indianapolis. We invite you to join us on Titans Radio for our broadcast coming up this weekend. Kickoff set for 12.02 Central Time. At 11 a.m. Central, we're on the air with the award-winning Titans Countdown. Over 50 stations throughout the Mid-South and on the Titans app. We'd love for you to join us. Listen to our broadcast on Titans Radio. For our fine staff, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.